Strategic thinking. Strategic thinking. When colonial Africa was opening up for as a market for industrialized Europe, just about the close of the 19th century, shoe manufacturers from UK, from Victoria and England, sent their marketing representatives to check whether there was market for their wares. One by one they went back and say in Africa. People do not wear shoes. So there is no single market for our products. All of them, except one character, the butter rep. He went back and said in Africa, no one wears shoes. There's such a huge market for our shoes. Now, and that's fundamentally why we have butter shops all over Africa, even in very remote towns. You'll find butter shop there. Now, the story of butter has a parallel in ancient Palestine when some spies were sent to go and explore the land and 10 of them came back with this report. The giants are too huge. The promise is too big to deliver. All of them except two who saw the same ground situation but came back with a different report. The giants are too big to miss. The promise too good to forfeit. They had a different perspective, a different worldview. Strategic thinking, as a start point this evening, let me say this, delivers victory where others see defeat. But before I teach you about strategic thinking tonight, I would like to explore about nine other types of thinking, and then I'll finish with strategic thinking. Admittedly, I borrowed a leaf from Thinking for Change by John C. Maxwell when I was thinking through thinking types. So I want to diagrammatize what I'm going to teach you this evening about uh, different types of thinking. Are you ready? And the first one I call it creative thinking. Creative thinking. The dolphin forms beautiful patterns in the game. Friendly and team player. Very creative patterns. Let me suggest this, creative thinkers are innovators. They have creative ways of solving problems. They are never stranded by any situation. They creatively come up with solutions for whatever challenge comes through their life. For them, they believe they are born to create. No circumstance is binding. They are above their situations. They are creative in problem solving. Whether they are couples who are married, whether they are guys in the business, they will not come and say they have been unable to sort out that situation. Reflective thinking. And I chose an animal there, the largest mammal on land, because the elephant is consistent and progressive. A death important, not urgent agenda. I don't know whether you can see something down here. Are you able to see? Yes. This is an urgent agenda. But reflective thinkers are an important agenda. Now, reflective thinkers repeat success patterns. They don't try to reinvent the wheel. They work with what is tested and proven. They set targets that are foreseeable and reachable. The good news is they don't misuse their power. They don't abuse their potential. And that type of thinking, I'll call it tonight, focused thinking. And I chose a cheetah to present this because it is zeroes in on the prey. It can also have grazers and capitalizes on speed, not strength. Focused thinkers immerse themselves deeply in a subject matter. 
they concentrate on their craft. They never get distracted. They zero in on what they are doing and they have little need for company. They are lone rangers, self-sufficient, self-contained. They can work all by themselves because they never allow things or stuff to distract them. Number four, realistic thinking. Realistic thinking. I picked the tiger to present this because it doesn't shout. Her trickitude, it pounces. It doesn't go say I'm a tiger. You just feel it. Relies on its own strength and power. Realistic thinkers don't depend on hope. They work with what is tangible and seeable. They estimate budgets before committing. They don't attempt white elephant projects. They just dare what they are sure they can do best on what they have done before. Number five, possibility thinkers. Possibility thinkers. And I picked on a shark to present possibility thinkers because the shark swims dangerous depths at phenomenal speeds. It's fearless in its domain. Now, possibility thinkers don't know what cannot be done. There is no impossible in their tongue. They see, op they see opportunities wherever they go. Now, possibility thinkers strive at the discouraging remarks. They never falter, they never give in, they never give up, they never get discouraged. It is their way or the highway. You have to follow exactly what they want to do. Now, the possibility thinkers argue the end justifies the means. So often than not, they try to circumvent the process. They try to shortcut the means to the end. And when they are leaders, they can put undue pressure on the people beneath them because they emphasize results. They explore virgin lands. They dare unfamiliar territories. They don't know what cannot be done. I read of a story of a, of a teacher who asked a five-year-old boy, Tom, can you swim at the deep end of the sea? The boy said, I don't know. Then the teacher said, How? what do you mean you don't know? The boy replied, I've never tried. <laughs> okay, wait a minute, Tom. Can you fly a rocket to the moon? The boy said, Mualim, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I've never tried. Possibility thinkers are noticed even when they're very young. I don't know whether there's a parent in our midst. You have a child who is just four years old, and you tell them they are going to drown. And the first question they ask you, Mom, how do you know that I'm going to drown? They challenge conventional thinking. Critical thinkers. Camouflages then strikes. Hard to trace or predict. Pulls big shots. Critical thinkers critically think about a situation and then strike at lightning speed. They keep the cards close to their chest. They never reveal plans. They camouflage their intentions until they hit. And I don't know whether you have a friend who doesn't tell you that they were putting up a house. They keep quiet all along. When they finish building, they surprise you with housewarming. <laughs> they never tell you they're buying a car, they're importing and it's taking three months in the high seas. But they only surprise you in the highways. Have you ever seen such guys? Yeah. They date for two years without telling anyone. They're dating underground. You are just surprised with a wedding card. They keep plants close to the chest. There are some cards hidden beneath the deck. Guess what? What is true in our day-to-day -day life is also true for them in the corporate world. You go to a brainstorming session. People speak until they run out of gas, and then the guy pulls the last point and throws the spanner in the works. And you wonder, why didn't you talk when we were starting? <laughs> the guy just confuses everyone, and you're back to the drawing table. Does that ring a bell? Critical thinkers. Now, when they are running their own businesses, they never review plans. Even if they put billboards, they never say clearly what they're advertising. Have you ever seen billboards you don't know what it is all about? <laughs> they prefer surprising the market.
surprising threats. Every plan is close to their chest. I have a friend who's like that. He's in our midst. Can I tell you his name? Yes. Number seven. <laughs> Bottom line thinking. Bottom line thinking. Brave, Deus beyond capacity. Her name is the lioness. Does not always go where she, go where she intended, but she ends up where she needed to be. Bottom line thinkers. Daring by design. Competitive by nature. Driven by ambition, consumed by zeal. From an accounting perspective, they are not concerned with the incomes. They are concerned with the net effect. That's the bottom line from an accounting perspective. What are we getting out of this deal? That's what I want to know. Let's not talk a lot. What am I getting? Have you ever met people who tell you that? Don't tell me so much. I just want to know what am I taking home? You've met such people? Bottom line, thinkers. And they can be very argumentative. Number eight, big picture thinking. Big picture thinking. See as far, the entire jungle stands taller than all other animals. Can high kick hard. Now, big picture thinkers see features that others cannot see. They have the capacity to see into the future. They don't want to pick the low-lying grapes. They want to pick the high-end fruits, premium products. They are never interested with the pennies. They are interested with the pound. They are never moved by small projects. Their interest is the program. They are concerned with the big picture. Let me repeat. Big picture thinkers. Can we come back to class? They never, they are not interested with the low-lying grapes. They go for the high-end fruits. They don't want to pick the fruit that every other Tom can pick. They go for premium products. They go for the pound, not the pennies. They're able to project business from a longitudinal perspective. Ten years from now, they can tell you where they will be. They don't just focus on the immediate goals. And number nine, tactical thinking. Tactical thinking. Can crack bones, the hyena. Drives in numbers. They are natural marathoners. Now, tactical thinkers are scavengers. They are not very sure where they are going to spend their day to day or where they are going to get their meal. <laughs> they are following someone else. And this is what they do. Let me give you two scenarios. If they are in business, they are not sure what they are going to supply by the end of the week. They have registered about 10 different business names. And when they come to your office, they just ask the need you have. And I can supply anything. <laughs> Whatever your need is. If they're in employment, they have different CVs for different purposes. <laughs> one, one place they're known as a marketer. The other place they're known as an accountant. The other place they're known as an event manager. They are just scavenging for opportunities. They are survivors. In the Kenyan language, they are hustlers, wheel dealers, and they never faint. Sometimes they are not very popular because they can go away with your prey. You discuss an idea with them and they pretend they are not listening. The next moment they have implemented. You've seen such fellows. It can be very frustrating. Very few people like the hyena. Let me ask you, we have discussed nine thinking types. Which one do you think is yours? Just ask your neighbor, what's your thinking type? What's your thinking type? <laughs> 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 
Any hyena in our midst? Okay, okay. By a show of hand, by a show of hand. If your neighbor is a dolphin, lift up your hand. Your neighbor is a dolphin, lift up your hand. All right, all right, all right. Your neighbor is an elephant, lift up your hand. Please, please, some of you are not, you are not fighting out. Can you fight out? Fight out, what's your neighbor? Okay, can I try one more time? Your neighbor is a dolphin, lift up your hand. Creative Incas, creative Incas. Okay, where are hand there? Your neighbor is an elephant, reflective thinkers. Lift up your hand. Reflective thinkers. Fantastic. <laughs> your neighbor is a cheetah, focused thinkers. Lift up your hand. Okay, fantastic. Your neighbor is a tiger, realistic thinkers. Lift up your hand. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> fantastic. Your neighbor is a possibility thinker. Lift up your hand. All right. Your neighbor is a, bottom, is a critical thinker. Critical thinker. Fair enough. Bottom line thinkers. Fair enough. Big picture thinkers. Fantastic. And finally the hyena, tactical thinkers. <laughs> uh, uh. Oh, you guys are so honest. <laughs> wow. I have a way of sensing hyenas from a distance. Let me pick them. No, I like not. At a like note. Finally, strategic thinking. Operates from a vantage point. The ego. Weathers all storms. Strategizes before moving, rises from the ashes. I want us to discuss slightly more about this animal before I proceed. And I'm using the ego just to discuss a little bit about strategic thinkers. And I want to do some seven key lessons from this animal alone. Number one, egos never flock. Egos never crowd. They never mix with pigeons. Egos usually fly alone. And if they must fly with any other bird of necessity, that bird must be an ego. They don't prefer to crowd on the ground where there are too many birds. They prefer to rise in altitude. They prefer an open space. They prefer the blue sky. Lesson out of it. Strategic thinkers don't associate with minor thinkers. They're in the company of other strategic thinkers. Strategic thinkers also do not get involved with the activities of minor thinkers. Like soldiers in a war, they don't get involved with civilian activities. Countless hours in the gadget, watching TV, gossiping is none of their business. They are concerned with higher ideals, issues at higher altitude. Number two, eagles spot their prey a far off. Eagles spot their prey a far off. The ego is the only bird in existence that can look straight into the eyes of the sun without damaging his own eyes. He has a protective eyelid that can protect him from the destructive sun rays. And the next moment, he can look down 5,000 feet beneath him and grab a squirrel mouse or a chicken at a tenth of a second, get her airborne and devoured into pieces. Lesson. Successful people see and seize opportunities. Successful people see and seize opportunities. They smell opportunities where others smell trouble. A volatile electioneering process makes them millionaires printing things, hiring vehicles.